Let us imagine that we are out in bright sunshine, that the sun is vertically overhead, and that we are amusing ourselves by casting shadows on the ground. If we are holding a cutout, which has the shape of a rectangle, with two pairs of parallel edges which are perpendicular, we see that the shadow is that of a parallelogram, that straight lines cast shadows which are straight lines, that parallel lines cast parallel shadows, but right angles do not remain right angles in the shadow of the cutout, unless, of course, the cutout is held with its plane parallel to the ground. We call this process of casting shadows when the sun is vertically overhead, orthogonal projection. The sun's rays are perpendicular to the ground. And if P is any small object in space, and P prime its shadow, the line joining the position of P to that of P prime is perpendicular to the ground. Hence the term orthogonal, which means perpendicular. P prime is said to be the orthogonal projection of P onto the ground, which we regard as a plane. Our observations have already shown us that straight lines project into straight lines, that parallel lines project into parallel lines, but Angles can be changed by orthogonal projection. Let us call the endpoints of one edge of the rectangle A and B. Let M be the midpoint of the edge. If the projections of these points are A prime, B prime, and M prime, respectively, we see at once, and indeed it can be proved, that M prime is the midpoint of the segment A prime, B prime. We say then that midpoints project into midpoints. Suppose that we now take a triangular cutout. The triangle is not a special one, the sides being unequal. This will cast a triangular shadow unless we hold the cutout so that its plane is perpendicular to the ground. Then its shadow will be a line segment. After some experimentation, we begin to wonder whether it is possible to hold the cutout in such a position that its shadow is an equilateral triangle, that is, a triangle with three equal sides. But before we consider this problem, let us learn something more of orthogonal projection by considering the shadow cast by a circular disk. If we hold a circular disk with its plane parallel to the ground, the shadow is also circular. But if we tilt the disk, the shadow becomes that of an oval curve an ellipse, in fact. Notice that the major axis of the elliptical shadow is always equal to the diameter of the circular disk, but the minor axis can be varied by changing the angle which the plane of the circular disk makes with the ground. As this angle increases from zero to a right angle, the length of the minor axis of the shadow decreases from that of the diameter of the circular disk to zero. We are therefore able to produce as shadows any kind of ellipse, from those which are circles to those which are so thin that they may be regarded as line segments. Let us now experiment with an elliptical cutout. It is not difficult to hold this so that it casts a circular shadow. We must
must keep the minor axis of the elliptical cutout unchanged in the shadow while we decrease the major axis. This can be done by holding the cutout so that the minor axis is parallel to the ground and then tilting the ellipse about its minor axis. The more we tilt the plane of the cutout from zero towards a right angle, the smaller the shadow cast by the major axis. There is a position where the shadow cast by the major axis is equal to the shadow cast by the minor axis, which has remained unchanged throughout this operation. In this position, the elliptical cutout casts a circular shadow. We see then that it is not difficult to hold an ellipse so that it casts a circular shadow. But what has all this to do with holding a triangle so that its orthogonal projection is an equilateral triangle? Suppose that we circumscribe a triangle about the ellipse so that the sides of the triangle all touch the ellipse. This can be done in many ways. But however it is done, we find that the lines joining the vertices of the triangle to the points of contact of the opposite side with the ellipse are concurrent. Now, if the points of contact on two of the sides are at the midpoints, then the point of contact of the ellipse with the third side is also at the midpoint of that side. This is so because the medians of a triangle are concurrent. We cease to worry about the circumscribed triangle and concentrate on this special ellipse. If we hold this again so that the minor axis is parallel to the ground and tilt the ellipse about the minor axis until the shadow of the major axis is equal to that of the minor axis, the shadow of the ellipse is once again a circle. But what has happened to the shadow of the circumscribed triangle? It is now an equilateral triangle. Let us see why this has to be so. Tangents to the ellipse project into tangents to the shadow of the ellipse, which is a circle. Points of contact of tangents project into points of contact of shadow tangents. Midpoints of sides of the triangle project into midpoints of the sides of the shadow triangle. We therefore have a shadow circle with a shadow triangle circumscribed about it and the points of contact of each side and the circle are the midpoints of those sides. Let us mark the equal segments. We know that the tangents from any point to a circle are equal in length. We therefore see very rapidly that any two sides of the shadow triangle are equal to each other, and the triangle of shadow is indeed equilateral. We began with an ellipse and built a triangle around it. If we had started with a given triangle, we should have had to inscribe an ellipse inside it, touching the sides at their midpoints. This is also possible, and therefore any triangle may be held so as to cast an equilateral shadow. Orthogonal projection is one example of a series of transformations of geometrical figures which, by reference to simpler figures, enable us to prove properties which look complicated. For instance, the theorem 
that the midpoints of parallel chords of an ellipse all lie on a line which passes through the center of the ellipse is not as clear as a similar theorem for a circle. But the circle theorem implies the theorem for the ellipse as we see by orthogonal projection. You should see what other theorems you can prove for the ellipse by using theorems known to be true for the circle. You should also try to prove the theorem we assumed in passing, that if an ellipse fits inside a triangle, the lines joining the vertices of the triangle to the points of contact of the ellipse with the opposite sides all pass through the same point. You might say, can we not also prove this theorem by the orthogonal projection of a circle inscribed in a triangle? You must decide this for yourself. Direct proofs, not using orthogonal projection, are available. In any case, after this demonstration of the power and the possibilities of orthogonal projection, you may feel that you would like to know more about geometrical transformation.